Thursday morning and um, I'm slightly later than I wanted to be thanks to me sleeping through my alarm clock but uh, I'm on my way to the School of Artisan Food for their food photography course. It doesn't start till half nine so I'm not actually late um, but they normally give you a selection of their breads and things for breakfast so I wasn't sure whether you had to be there before 9.30 for your coffee and bread or whether that was at 9.30 so I intended to get here a little bit earlier but I'm going to be there sat nav is predicting 9.23 it's a lovely place um, what I'm going to do is actually just turn the camera around so you can see uh, the kind of estate, the Welbeck estate that the Art School of Artists and Food is on. So just bear with me, I'm going to do that now. Hopefully, you can just see that and the camera doesn't move around too much. Um, it's the first time I've done a photography course here. I've done other ones with um, like smartphone photography and sort of general photography for social media. So it's going to be quite interesting to see what advice they give for photographing food. I've got a, um, a bag full of wires, I don't know if you can see this. <laughs> um, that's all my charges and everything because we're using a DSR camera so I've bought my DSR I haven't actually used this for a long time because um, I just found that I wasn't getting great results with it so I've been using my Canon and uh, my iPhone which is there so it'll be interesting to see what tips I can pick up with it and whether or not I start using it again. So let's go and uh, join the group. documentary background, I did all my university practice analogue, black and white, I spent a lot of time in the dark room with stinking chemicals, um, I then rolled out into a professional world where digital was now taking over, so I had to relearn everything in terms of tech, so that side of things, I probably have some very perverse and unorthodox ways of using the camera, I turn off everything that beeps and whistles, um, and mostly treat it as if it was uh, an analog camera. So my work tends to be, I like texture, I like things that are nice and graphic, quite simple. Um, I work with mostly primarily editorial clients, so we work with food stylists, work with magazines um, and books. So in the, actually in the, um, in the refectory there's a book called Slow Dough, which uh, we shot here over four days with the students. Um, so again, simple, textural. I like details, so I like to get really close to things. I've always, even when I was a child, 
my primary school teacher used to tell me off because my writing was so tiny that I could fit on three lines what most of the other kids were writing on two sides of A4. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of carried on. <laughs> I like to get close to things. So my macro lens is my best friend. Aha, there we go. So hopefully you can still see these. Mm -hmm. I might just move up close. So, and again, texture, shape, all kind of play really, really, really <laughs> strongly in my work. Um, I'll leave these all out so you can have a, have a look if you like. Um, one of the things I have learned is that nothing quite goes to plan. So you kind of have to quite often embrace and love the mistakes when things go wrong because that can actually give you quite a nice <laughs> shot. <laughs> um, it will always go wrong at the worst possible time. Everything will spill at the last second, mm -hmm. just as you hit the shutter, that's when things pour over the top of glasses. Um, and most recently I've been kind of working with lots of darks, and kind of hanging things seems to have become a bit of a trend in my work. So my husband usually comes home and finds me with the dining table on end, and everything's strung from curtain rails, and generally the house looks like a bonsite and there's food squashed into every carpet. And then. So, I don't have a studio, I either work on location or at home in our living room or our tiny kitchen or the utility room wherever I can kind of commandeer a little bit of space, find a nice texture. So what we're going to do today is work with lots of natural light um, and we're going to kind of, we'll be going around and about the building a bit and probably out into the veg garden as well. So you can kind of get used to working in environments where you don't necessarily have total control. I was talking to Tanya earlier about blogging, where you don't necessarily know what the lighting is going to be like when you go in, or what you're going to be faced with. Kind of, you start to learn what you can do with two arms and, and a mouth, and, and what you can't. <laughs> so, in terms of my kind of overhead shot, that would be about as much as I do. But you can, you know, keep playing, keep moving things around. Composition is one of those things that there are rules to it, and the little booklet that you've got in the bags gives you a kind of checklist. For when you go away from here, and there are some bits, explanations like the rule of thirds, things like that. That if you compositionally, if you get stuck to begin with and you kind of look at something and don't know where to start, it gives you a good start point. But rules on hard and fast, and they're to be broken and played with. Um, so, you know, there's nothing wrong with sticking a single subject in the bottom corner of the frame. And again, we might move those around as we crack on, but start with them there. And this is where the depth of field really comes into play. Because what we want is, I don't want the fairy lights to be perfectly in focus. So I'm going to put the focus right on that cake at the very, very front. So the focus is on the edge of the raspberry, just at the front of the shot. And this time we're going to go down to about. So the lowest I can go at the minute is four and a half with this lens on. So that gives us lots of natural light coming in, but it gives us a nice shallow depth of field. So we should, our point of focus should be about here, which will turn the fairy lights, instead of being able to see the light, it should just turn them into little pinpricks of light. And this is again where we're talking about aperture, so the same as the table shot, we can really utilise really utilise that aperture to help us focus on the artichokes but not too much on the door or you can have the whole thing in focus if you go with higher aperture so you've got that real strong texture in the background. So if anybody wants to have a wander around the veg garden as well, there's some gorgeous courgettes growing over there um, and there is some lovely
heavy. Um, galvanised, which is the back. I don't know the whiteboard. Mm -hmm. So, again, just don't think of things as they are, but what they could be. Isn't that quite reflective? Oh, it, it, is, it is, it's clean, but if you get a handful of flour and rub it in, oh, right. <laughs> it, softens, yeah. it softens it down. Alternatively, do what I would wish, is just leave it for about six months in a really dusty corridor. Um, <laughs> and you get a lovely sort of speckle pattern on it. The chemical burns on it from my father flicking um, fixer at it from when he was processing. Oh, right. He just kept flicking his hands like that, and it a lovely kind of <laughs> spray pattern up it. But then in terms of small backgrounds, again, these are just painted up lids off uh, wine boxes. So wooden wine crates. If you've just got little things, you know, three or four ingredients, little bowls, teaspoons, you can get a really nice, expensive farrel ball, three pound a pot, mm. test a pot, or find somebody who's done the house out and has little bits left over, and you can do, you know, easily have sort of 10 of those, and they don't take a penny space at all, and they're really light, easy and versatile. And again, you can use two to make a little room set. So that's another handy little... There's a lot of blue feature in me, discovering my head. <laughs> uh, and my last little blue feature trick is um, B&Q marble floor tiles. So you've got a high gloss and a nice matte side, but they give you a really, really lovely kind of high-end cheese counter feel, but without having to trail around the entire cheese counter behind you. So once we've all had brew, uh, sort of five minute absorbing contemplate, there should be enough bits of board, bits of background, bits of cloth. We're obviously in a very low light room now, so this is where <laughs> tripods and things like that can come in handy. We can also show you how to increase the ISO so it can help you work in low light situations where you haven't got a tripod. If everybody wants to sort of take a background and build their own little set from scratch, we've got the most beautiful fruit and veg, and flowers. We've also got the little free hands, artichokes, the flowers, everything to play with. So if we all aim for a single, a single small setup um, that is either ingredients or a finished product, and then hopefully we can again trot around if anybody's got any specific worries or questions, and then we're talking about compositional kind of queries, um, but hopefully we should get everybody with a nice I've bought some of them scratch chutney. Perfect. Right. Absolutely, definitely. Um, if anyone else has any kind of specific questions about things that they need for work or personal sort of blogs and things, um, hopefully we can kind of try and find a handy solution. And then after that we'll have lunch where there'll be a whole new array of things. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
past two now. It finished roughly about two o'clock. We did have lunch before we left, which was amazing, obviously, as you would expect from a while back. Um, wouldn't it be an ideal world if you could come home and that kind of buffet was laid out for you every day? I think I could eat healthily if that buffet was laid out for me. So I, I should live at Welbeck basically for that food. All fresh, all healthy, obviously, uh, and really, really nice. So I always think when you go on a course there, the food is worth going for alone. Mile, left into Bunby Road. Uh, but the course itself, did I learn anything? Um, I think the thing with photography courses is that people are at all different levels. Um, some people use their camera all the time, some people use it occasionally, some are just starting, some are like me where they use it for vlogging and blogging. So we've all got different expectations and different needs from the course. There were some people on it that used their camera a lot. Um, I think one guy was a wildlife photographer. And so obviously he knew what his camera could do a lot more than say I would. Uh, there, were, there were a real mix of people there to be honest. Uh, one lady was setting up a business making marzipan sweets and moulds and things. Another lady uh, was head of marketing for a chutney company. So yeah, a real mix of people and obviously everybody there had different needs. We were given a lot of time to do our own thing and experiment with lights and sets and things. Uh, perhaps we, some of us might have needed a little bit more guidance rather than being left on a road the tutor was there for that if you wanted her you could ask her to come over and you know she quite happily help you with that so yeah a general a good general course I would say in terms of photography uh, food photography it kind of only scratched the surface I think there's a lot more but I think it certainly helped me with my composition or it's certainly a reminder of things that I've, I've done before and perhaps forgotten or not been using. We didn't learn any of the tips about um, using mashed potato as ice cream and um, making steam with tampons or whatever it is. I might have got that completely wrong. spraying things with oil to make them glisten. There's probably a whole course on that in itself. After roundabout, take the second exit onto Worksop Road. But it was only a half day course, which I like because I sometimes feel on courses when you've had your lunch, you kind of um, almost get a bit sleepy and you kind of stop absorbing the information almost. But uh, definitely check out the courses at the School of Arts and Food. They do all sorts. So hopefully you've enjoyed my video. If you would like to see more like this then hit the subscribe button give it a thumbs up. If you've got any comments or any questions about the course, do comment below or get in touch if there's anything you want to ask me. Take a look at the blog as well, that's tenyearoys.net. And I'll see you next time. Bye.